Jets drill deep right field. Down the line toward the Coca-Cola corner. It's gone. Robinson Cano with his first career three home run game. All Cano tonight. Three home runs, five RBIs, five nothing New York. Base is loaded, two out. Swung on and line to left center. On the run is Hicks. And Hicks makes a diving catch to win the game. Ball game over. Yankees win. The Yankees win. Welcome to the thread. Presented by City. As training camp kicks off, it was New York baseball that had some big moments last night. Hey, everybody, welcome to The Thread. I'm Justine Ward. So good to have you with us. The Yankees are open for business when it comes to acquiring a starting pitcher. Could a deal really get done that would send Noah Syndergaard to the Bronx? We have plenty of baseball ahead, but we start in East Rutherford as Eli Manning opens what is likely his last training camp with the Giants. But first, let's get the OBJ situation out of the way, which was addressed by by Pat Shermer today. I really don't have any reaction um, other than I know when the trade was made, we felt like we went through it in a, in a professional way. He was out of the country at the time when it when it happened, and we made efforts to get in touch with him. Um, and I know at Dave actually did speak to him, and I made efforts to get in touch with him both through uh, phone and text. But he was out of the country, and so. Um, but listen, I've said it all along. I, you know, we're. You know, we're hopeful that he can go to Cleveland and and help them win football games and play good football. And so um, that's really that's really the gist of it. And let's get to the direct message with our NFL insider Ralph Vecchiano, who is in East Rutherford. And Ralph, hopefully Pat Shermer put all of this Odell drama to bed for now. We know Eli Manning spoke to the media today. What were your impressions on what Eli had to say? Well, I've been here for all 16 of Eli Manning's training camps, and this was the most reflective I've ever heard of him on day one. Now, listen, he didn't come out right out and say that he felt like this was going to be his last camp or that he was looking back on his career, but he kind of alluded to it a little bit and talked about how he knows that the end can come at any time. Clearly, he understands the situation. He's 38 years old, entering the last year of his contract. Daniel Jones is here, and the Giants are raving about him. I think he understands that he He's got an opportunity here. He plays well. Maybe his career goes on. But if he doesn't, they finally have a replacement and his Giants career could come to an end. So, Ralph, the pressure is on. How much of a quarterback battle will we really see? Do you expect Daniel Jones to get any first team reps? I think he's going to get a few just to give him a taste of what it's like to play with the first team. But how much of a quarterback battle we actually get is going to entirely be up to Eli Manning. The Giants intention is for Manning to go out, have a great season, lead them to the playoffs and Jones to not play it down all season long. But really, if Manning falters, if he struggles at any point, I think they're open to the idea of playing the rookie if they have to. They don't want to, but they will if it comes to that. All right, Ralph, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Moving on to the Jets as the team reported today ahead of their first practice tomorrow morning. Several big free agent acquisitions and new head coach and GM have soared expectations for the new look Jets as there's definitely some hype in Florham Park. These guys are going to come in here and work. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure that when this season goes, we're progressively getting better. And that's our that's our goal. Barring injuries, obviously significant players, uh, would you be disappointed if you didn't play meaningful games in December? We're going to play meaningful games in the end of November and December. That's what we're going to do. You know, the whole building, you can kind of sense a, you know, um, almost a rebirth. I mean, I feel like the whole building is very energized. There's a lot of energy within the building, um, a lot of good vibes. So I think for us, it's it's just kind of feeding off of that. And it happens naturally. I mean, we can already feel it in the building. Um, and especially, you know, with Joe Douglas as well. I mean, um, I feel like it's, you know, there's good vibes in the building. And as long as you have that good energy, um, you know, we can we can win with that. 
And it's time now for the direct message from Florham Park as we welcome in Jets beat writer for the Athletic, Connor Hughes. And Connor, we just heard Adam Gaze say that this team will be playing meaningful games in November and December. What was your reaction to that and the reaction in the building to those comments? Uh, Joe Namath, step aside. This is the new uh, most lofty guarantee in team history, right? But no, in all seriousness, I think it kind of sets the tone uh, for what the Jets are trying to accomplish this year. You know, this is a team that, that has undergone uh, really a, a, some significant change this offseason, a very eventful offseason, you know, the, a rebirth, as Sam Donald described it. And, and I think what, what Adam Gase is saying there is that he's – believing that this team is ready to turn a corner. And I know in his mind, he's probably thinking playoffs. He's probably thinking Super Bowl. But but with the way that this thing has gone for the Jets the last several years, competing in November, competing in December, positioning themselves for a playoff run would be a legitimate step in the right direction. And you look around, they've kind of got the pieces to do it, right? You know, Jamison Crowder, big free agent acquisition. Le'Veon Bell, big free agent acquisition. C.J. Mosley, Chris Herndon in year two. Robbie Anderson, Leonard Williams in contract years. I think that the stage has been set for this to be a new era of Jets football. The 5-11 and 11 years just aren't going to cut it anymore. They're ready to start competing. Connor, a new era. We know you have some early mornings in store for you as practice time has been moved up this year. With the new head coach, new GM, what other things might be new this year in training camp? Well, for the Jets, I think when you're looking at what they what they need, I think it's kind of the two things that, that they surprisingly did not address in free agency. You know, Jonathan Harrison is this team's starting center, almost with no competition behind him. At the cornerback position, Daryl Roberts, as Adam Gase said today, is their other starting corner, corner opposite Tremaine Johnson. The Jets are taking some risks with those guys, considering there isn't much depth behind them. So, you know, offense, I think it's going to be all right. I think they're going to be pretty talented. Defense Defense, though, and with the cornerback position and then the center is where you kind of got to watch this thing develop in training camp. Is the risk in Jonathan Harrison going to pay off? Is the risk in Daryl Roberts going to pay off? We're going to see, and those are two positions at center and corner where if things go bad for the Jets, uh, it could maybe be a train wreck for this year. All right, some things to watch. Connor, thank you so much. I'm sure we'll be seeing you very soon. Thanks, Justine. Looking forward to it. And let's welcome in Chris Williamson in our panel. So overwhelmingly positive from Jets camp. Another note for you, by the way, Chris, Adam Gase says Le'Veon Bell will be jumping right in. No easing back in after his time off from the game. He better be. <laughs> I mean, shoot, he hasn't played in a year, so that should be really uh, something that we expect from him as I'm joined by Rob Perez of the Action Network and John Descrimpsey. So we heard what Adam Gase had to say about his team and the expectations. Do you believe him when he says, yeah, we're going to be playing meaningful games in the end of November and into this Yeah, season. they're going to be meaningful. I just don't know for which team because you're playing the Steelers, you're playing the Ravens, and maybe what he was saying was we're going to be relevant. And in the end, these are all just words. Actions speak louder than words. Whatever cliche we can come up with, guys. Ultimately, all that matters is the win-loss record. But I will give him some credit here. Two quotes that, that came out of his mouth that were important to me. How are we going to handle it when something goes wrong? Because that question has been answered correctly by the Jets in north of a decade. And also, when Sam Darnold speaks, they listen. When he said they, he's referring to Le'Veon Bell and guys that have made the noise. So if Darnold has that type of pull already, that's big news for me if I'm a Jets fan. No doubt about it. And fellas, I'm buying the idea that this team is playing meaningful football games in November and December. And remember, this is something the Jets haven't done since 2015. So it's a long time coming. You have the offseason they had. You bring in Le'Veon Bell. You bring in Crowder. You have a new head coach who should be able to work very well with this second-year quarterback, and you expect this second-year quarterback to make a big jump. And say what you want about Adam Gaze and his people skills. Say what you want about Adam Gaze and his track record with the Miami Dolphins. With a limited roster in three straight years, the Dolphins were playing games that mattered in November and December. I think this team will absolutely be in a mix. And I don't know about you guys, I'm thinking that new beard that Adam Gaze is that that beard it looks good. Great. But that beard like healthy. Leo DiCaprio from The Revenant out <laughs> I here. I can say, you can pull hole. that beard off in the summertime. I can only imagine what it's going to look like it's November, the winter, December. Be Real quick, no excuses. You got Le'Veon, Le'Veon Bell back there. You have an offensive line. Uh, there's, there's no reason why Sam Darrell can't take the next step this year. I definitely agree with that. All right, moving to the Giants. We heard what Pat Shermer had to say about OBJ's comments that, you know, Shermer basically just texted him, yeah, we traded you. He didn't really like it. When will we stop hearing about OBJ? When will Giants have to stop ask, answering questions about this guy? 
Uh, he's going to be in the newspapers until the Giants are, let's say, 10-4, and 9-3, and three, until he doesn't matter anymore because he sells newspapers. He's still going to. The drama is going to follow him until Sterling Shepard takes that. You want to, you want to take over? You want to be the most popular figure in this city? You got the opportunity to. If you go out there and go eight receptions, 120 yards in week one, people will start forgetting about Odell rather quickly, but he's always going to be around because he is Odell Beckham. No doubt about it. He's one of those transcendent figures in the league, whether you like him or not. And for the Giants, it's very simple. You don't want to hear about Odell Beckham Jr.? Go out and win football games. End the story. Go out and perform. Go out and score points. And do something the team hasn't done a whole lot with Beckham on the sideline. Win football games. And I hate to break the bad news to the Giant fan, at least for this season coming up. I don't think they're winning a whole lot of football games. Okay, well, we'll see Daniel Jones then if they're not winning a whole lot of football games. You with should, I, with a first round pick. I better hope so. We'd like to see that, right, Justine? I, I like the silver lining there, Chris. I try to do a little yeah. something. Rogers Favre. Okay. Oh. Oh, 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 that's, oh that's, that's, that's how it started. Oh, hold up. Okay, Jeez, cool a minute. We couldn't leave here today without talking about that insane catch by Aaron Hicks. The highs of the winner on the way and also some of the lows. Could the Yankees be without Gary Sanchez for an extended period of time? We're switching to baseball next. The Thread is brought to you by City. Know what else is amazing? Sending money to friends and family with Zelle on the City mobile app. Designed for you to spend less time on it. You got this. You got this. From the start, the C-Class was ahead of its time. Still, we never stopped making it stronger, faster, smarter. Because to be the best is to never, ever stop making it better. There's never been a better time to become part of the Mercedes-Benz family. Lease the C300 sedan for just $389 a month at the Mercedes-Benz summer event. Hurry in now. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Ready to feel the freedom you get riding a Harley Davidson? With payments as low as $129 a month, owning a Harley Davidson is easier and more affordable than ever. Schedule your test ride at your local Harley Davidson dealer. Finance offer subject to credit approval. This was me before Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance, so I only pay for what I need. And this is me now. Any physical changes to this man's appearance are purely coincidental. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Tonight, Robinson Cano and the Mets square off against opponents from the West Coast as they look for victory over Manny Machado and the Padres at home. It's here. Coverage begins with City pregame tonight at 6.30, only on SNY. Hey, Joey, what's the latest on trade talks? Hey, Joey. Yeah, I heard you the first time. Your team's in the crapper and so was I, all right? What, I offend you? SNY, complete coverage of every New York team anytime from any device. And we're back with some good news on the Yankees. They avoided losing a third straight game to the Twins last night, taking a little over five hours to come back a few different times to beat the Twins 14 to 12 in 10 innings. Thanks in large part to this spectacular catch by Aaron Hicks. And it's a game Aaron Boone won't soon forget. That's one of those games, you know, for being late July that, you know, we'll probably be talking about for a long time. And I mean, <clears throat> our guys are just, really really good at competition and that was the ultimate competition out there where it was obviously tough for both teams on the mound and um, so many guys did some really really special things but there were some low spots in the win as gary sanchez was placed on the injured list with a groin strain after he landed awkwardly on first base in the eighth and guys, this is the second year in a row that he's had a groin injury. Something's wrong about his groins. He needs to get that checked out. He's <laughs> 0 for 19 in his last 19 at bats. How much of an impact, Rob, do you think this has on the team once he's going to the IL? First of all, can this guy just 
get to first base without pulling up lame for once. Like, I just, that's all we ask for, because his mere presence, as I stood over there 48 hours ago, I said his mere presence in the lineup is all that matters, regardless of his slump, because he's also a catcher and has pitcher responsibilities with managing them, and he's been doing great. You want to talk about the slump? Didi had the, almost the same exact slump between May 1st and June 6th last year. I'm not worried about the bat, but I am worried about his presence actually being there. That's my biggest worry. Well, no doubt. And listen, Gary Sanchez was instrumental in the Yankees having such a great first half. There's a reason why he started the All-Star game for the American League. He's in this massive funk. He hits a couple of balls right on the screws in last night's game. And then you see him come up lame. It gives you the exact flashback to what we saw last year in that game against the Tampa Bay Rays. And now durability going to be called into question. But I think for a guy who's catching a ton, this could almost be a little bit of a blessing in disguise right. because the Yankees are going to win this division. The Yankees are going to be playing October baseball. The key is that the Yankees get the first half version of Gary Sanchez back when he's off the injured list. All right, now let's focus on the positive news now. Aaron Hicks, Didi Gregorius, both had great games. Who would be the best part of that game last night? Oh, I mean, that's like trying to pick your favorite kid if you have one, if you're a Yankee <laughs> fan. And by the way, I probably woke up all of Brooklyn with the way I was yelling and screaming after Aaron Hicks made that play. <laughs> but for me, it's going to be Aaron Hicks because I'm a sucker for defense. And don't get me wrong, Didi had a great game. Seven RBIs, five hits, looked like the Didi of last year. But for Aaron Hicks to come up in the ninth inning to give the Yankees the lead with the homer, and then to end the game in that sort of fashion, boys, that's as good as it gets. If you're in any category with Babe Ruth, Gehrig, it could be winning bingo cards. It's still impressive. So props to D. Gregorius for that five hit, seven RBI multi, whatever that category is now, he's in it. Impressive. But that Hicks catch at the very end, if these two teams end up facing each other in an LDS or an LCS, we're going to be seeing that on replay, that this is the last time they face each other when it actually mattered. This felt like the Chiefs-Rams of baseball, that Monday night football game that was 50-50, to 50, this 14-12, to because if he doesn't make that catch, he doesn't go full swing. Game's over. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. That was a really important moment, and maybe there's a little psychological advantage the Yankees will get for that come October. Well, and remember, fellas, the Yankees own the Minnesota Twins, but this is a different Twins team with the way they can score runs. Do I think the Yankees are better? Yes. But man, I'd sign for seven more games of that in the championship series. Let's oh, make yeah. it happen. All day. Let's do it. And what was great about that, Justine, is that Hicks did it to his former team. Yeah. That was really yes. impressive. Yes. And I think Hicks and Gregorius were a little bit of a question mark coming into the season and they just came up big. So. All right, how guys. you start, how you finish. <laughs> That's right. Ahead on the thread. In case you haven't noticed, Robbie Cano has had a pretty good month of July. And last night, he answered his critics in a big way. We go back to City Field for the fireworks. Stay with us. Last baseball season, big league hitters whiffed on 71,839 pitches. That's a lot of swings for not a lot of action. But this baseball season, there's FanDuel Sportsbook. So now you can bet the big leagues and get more out of every pitch all season long. And with FanDuel's live betting, you can even place bets after first pitch, right through the final out. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today and get refunded up to $500 in site credit if you don't win your first bet. FanDuel Sportsbook, more ways to win. Don't miss the action this summer when New York's only professional tennis team, the New York Empire, take the court July 14th through 30th at the Cary Leeds Center for Tennis and Learning in fast, exciting team competition. Watch the best tennis players in the world face off in world team tennis action, including top American star John Isner, U.S. Open champion Sloane Stephens, U.S. Davis Cup captain Marty Fish, and tennis icon Venus Williams. For tickets, go to nyempiretennis.com. When the hot sun hits your ice cream, lick fast, like a cookie dough ninja. Apply that same speed to the Ford Hurry Up and Save Sales event. For the first time ever, get 20% estimated savings on select Ford models. Plus, earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. It all adds up. Don't you love math? So get here ASAP, because tasty deals in summer go fast. Save an estimated 20% on a Ford Edge, or get a $179 a month lease. Visit buyfordnow.com. If you were to attend a party with all of history's most influential people, the creators, the innovators, the pioneers, you'd notice a common theme. But if you were to choose one mother or father to throw such a party, it would have to be the father of tequila. Cuervo Tradicional, since 1795, the father of tequila. 
Let's start through the news as we've been waiting all season for Robinson Cano to break out. And last night he did so in a huge way, hitting three homers for the first time in his career. Cano drove in all five runs for the Mets as they beat the Padres 5-2. And his manager wanted to lay some of those headlines to rest about the 36-year-old. Take a listen. You don't hit three homers if you're declining when you've never done it in your career. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? So um, the power's there, the swing is there, the hands are there. Um, you know, he did. He went through um, a tough stretch, and, and a lot of players do that. Robinson Cano probably hasn't been through many of them in his career. Um, Almost everybody else has. <laughs> so it stands out a little bit more when it happens to a player like Robbie. But uh, he, he's going to right the ship, and he has. And, guys, that was his first home run at City Field since April. He knocked in three of them. So That's, em that's embarrassing. It seems like that's an eternity ago I know. that first home run against the Nationals on opening day. It's crazy. We thought so the greatest trade of all time. I know. And now we see it. Now one of the worst. Kind of quickly, huh? <laughs> he's only got, nine, a little bit. He only got nine home runs this season. But... It was a great night for him. Three home runs, first time in his career. How impressed were you by what he did? No, stop this. Like the three of us sitting at this table, we all have that X. We all have someone that when the text comes in at 2 a.m., don't pick it up. You know it's just bad news. This is what it felt like last night. I'm seeing Cano hit bomb after bomb. I'm not getting suckered back into this because I've been preaching consistency. This is what the Mets do, death by paper cuts. And they haven't ripped, this is not ripping the Band-Aid off on this season. So for me, uh, it's great. Like, Three home runs is impressive, but is this enough to like get me back on board and think we're buyers at the deadline all of a sudden? I refuse to buy into this. Consistency over weeks, not just one game. Let's spread those three home runs over when we actually need them. Please, all Mets fans, please back me up on this. Well, no doubt. I mean, listen, when you're seven games out of a wild card spot, it's very difficult to look at one individual game and be thrown a parade. And listen, last night was a great night for Robinson Cano. Basically, for the first time since opening day or maybe a couple of those games against the Miami Marlins, he actually looked like the player we saw with the Yankees. He actually looked like the player we saw in Seattle. But at the end of the day, the Mets made the trade with the Seattle Mariners to win this year. And the fact that you haven't gotten consistent performances out of Robinson Cano, I'm sorry, I don't want to sound like a hater. I don't want to sound like I'm sipping haterade. No, it's reality. You can't get overly excited when you look at where this team is at and you consider what Cano gave you in the second half, or in the first half, I should say, which was absolutely nothing. Keyword, day. He said day. Let's turn that into week. Series. We're not gonna, we're not gonna How about a month? That would be spectacular, but we know that's not going to happen. All right, sticking with the Mets, our Andy Martino has a column on SNY.TV suggesting a trade of Noah Syndergaard to the Yankees for pitching prospect Davey Garcia and another top prospect like Estevan Florial would make sense for both teams. JJ, do you see this being a plausible idea? No, no, no way, no how. Listen, just think about what's at stake for the New York Mets who right now are where they're at in the National League East, where they're at in the wild card race. You're going to take a guy who was your conquering hero, Noah Syndergaard, and I get it, Syndergaard's pitched a lot better. Syndergaard has not lived up to expectations so far this year. But the idea of the Mets taking Syndergaard, who could potentially, dare I say, be the missing piece for the New York Yankees, do I buy the idea that ownership is going to sign off on a trade like that? I don't care what they're getting in return. No, I don't. The X's and O's can work here, right? There's they a way, the way that you can make this work. Good luck selling this to the Mets fan base for the next 10 years that you put Syndergaard in pinstripes. I understand he's not having the best year of his career. We're talking about Syndergaard here, not Wheeler. So any trade with the Yankees, if you're a Mets fan, it better be an utter fleecing, fleecing, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do a transaction between the two teams. This proposed in the article, not enough for me. So you want, like, five prospects? Well, listen, I mean, if I'm, I'm a Mets, yeah, I need to be blown away. And <laughs> listen, from a Yankees standpoint here, too, do they need a difference-making starting pitcher? Yes, but they really like Garcia, who's got the comparisons already to Pedro Martinez. And we're talking about guys like Andujar, Frazier, on and on we go. I mean, that's the only way you're making that deal if you're the Mets. If you're getting an Andujar, a Frazier, a Debbie Garcia, maybe throw four in there, then, yeah, I'd make the trade. But we both know there's no way in the world that's going to happen. No. Not going to happen. All right, we got to move on. Still ahead on the thread. We go back to football. Sam Darnold may be the Marlboro man's grandson, but he is hardly flashy. But one NFL player made a pretty loud arrival at his team's camp today. That's next on the thread. The thread is brought to you by the City Rewards Plus card. It rounds your points up to the nearest 10 on every purchase so you can score big points even on the little things.
Bentley. Burning Man Tour 2019, Friday, July 26th, PNC Bank Arts Center. And he's bringing along special guests, John Party, Tennille Towns, and Hot Country Nights. Dirks Bentley, live in concert. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. This summer, book two separate qualifying stays at choicehotels.com and earn a $50 gift card. Because when your business is rewarding yourself, our business is you. Book direct at choicehotels.com. $12 endless apps from TGI Fridays are back just for you. You, a human being with an appetite, which, through a remarkable twist of fate, is the reason we call them appetizers. $12 endless apps. Pick one app, then another, endlessly. TGI Fridays. Who's raking? Who's slumping? Who's dealing? Catch up on all the local baseball activity from our panel of insiders as they recap and break down the latest Mets and Yankees action on Baseball Night in New York. Tonight at 6, only on SNY. Are you Caden Phillips? Yeah. You are our kid caster, July 25th. Watch Caden make his play-by-play -play debut with Gary, Keith, and Ron, presented by RPM Raceway, as the Mets take on the Padres tomorrow on SNY. Can we get a, it's out of here, like Gary? It's out of here! Coming up on Loud Mouth, Robinson Cano hits three home runs in one game, and it really doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> and we'll go to the gridiron here from Eli. Is it his last year with the Giants? We'll see after you finish up on the thread, Chris. Thanks, John. Who knows? Maybe 2075 and Eli will still be there. All right, we're obviously excited for football with training camps getting underway, and nobody's more excited than Jalen Ramsey of the Jaguars. The safety showed up to camp in an armored truck led by his own MC who announced his arrival with a bullhorn in front of probably seven or ten reporters. Jalen wants a big contract. Fellas, how ridiculous was this? If you're going to go through the whole process of setting this up, you better make sure you just dedicate 15 minutes to make sure people actually show up. Thank God they had the bullhorn there because no one else was there listening. You got to hear it from across the lake. You might as well have a bullhorn. And let's be honest, Jalen Ramsey is awfully tough to take. I mean, last year he's disparaging every quarterback in the league. His team did not back it up. We know he's an all-world corner. But, man, when you pull a stunt like this, you better be ready to come to play at the start of the year. Oh, Seems like a waste of resources, ready. no? And how much did he spend? on that I to get really that imagine. armor truck to no wonder he it. Hold that is that is while. will take it from here. We'll see you tomorrow at 5. Have a great night, everybody. You get your homework? Yeah. Yeah? Hey. What's the role of a car company? To take your kids to and from school? Don't forget your science project. We think it can be something bigger. This summer, Volkswagen is supporting America's teachers. Visit your VW dealer to learn how you can join in. Hurry in during the Volkswagen Drive Bigger event and lease a value-packed 2019 Tiguan S4 Motion for just $209 a month. Did you help build New York or New Jersey? Did you work in the building trades or military or do industrial or automotive work where you were exposed to asbestos that led to a mesothelioma or lung cancer diagnosis? If so, you are a real hero. And Whites in Luxembourg wants to speak with you and help achieve justice and compensation. Call 800-303-9100. That's 800-303-9100. Let's be honest. You don't really talk about your insurance unless you're complaining about it. You go on about it's how... It's so confusing, it hurts my brain. Yeah, I hear you. Or you say you can't believe... How much of a hassle it is. Mm. And tell anyone who listen. Uh, oh, uh, ha, ha. She said it's so expensive. Tell me about it. Yes, I'm, I'm telling the people at home. That's why eSurance is making the whole experience surprisingly painless, so you never have to talk about it unless you're the spokesperson. eSurance, it's surprisingly painless. Keith Hernandez here, and I'm here to tell you about the Mets bullpen jackpot sweepstakes from the New York Lottery. All season long, if one of our Metsies hits a home run off the New York Lottery sign, one lucky contestant can win cash. For every game that the sign isn't hit, the bullpen jackpot goes up and up and up. Visit sny.tv slash New York Lottery for your chance to win.